Hi students, now we will discuss about rotational viscometers. As already told to you, rotational viscometers are categorized into three types cup and bob viscometer, cone and plate viscometers, and penetrometers. So, first to start with cup and bob viscometers. Now, cup and bob viscometers are further classified into three types, but before that, let me tell you what is cup and what is bob. The hollow cylinder the outer part is known as cup. The inner solid part is called as bob. So in this equipment, either cup rotates or bob rotates. So all the instruments are based on that. So cow type, whose example is Mac Michael viscometer, is the cup and bob viscometer where cup is rotating and measurement is done on bob. So cup is rotating and measurement is done on bob or cow type. In surl type, bob is rotating and measurement is done on cup. I repeat again, bob is rotating. So this inner portion will rotate and measurement is done on cup part. Now, the example of surl type is very important, Brookfield viscometer and Stormer viscometer. The third type is one where bob rotates. And measurement is done on bob itself. So measurement is on bob and bob is only rotating. The example of third type is rotovisco and contraves viscometer. So this is all about types of cup and bob viscometer. If we come on for uh, how they work, so they consist of cup and bob. One will rotate and measurement is done. The measurement is of uh, third, what is happening to the change in RPM, the weight is applied. So the equation is viscosity is equals to K. K is constant called as instrument factor. W is stress or weight which is applied and R is strain or RPM. So what is happening here? The material is filled in between the gap. So in between there is gap between cup and bob. The material is filled here. One is moving, so weight is applied and movement begins. When weight is applied, W is changing. When movement becomes, RPM is noting. And at, at each W, means weight is increasing like 5 Newton, 10 Newton, 15 Newton, 20 Newtons, we are determining R. So in total, we are getting a rheogram because we have different values of stress and we are getting different values of strain. Based on the rheogram, it will tell you about the nature of the material. Already we have done all the graphs, so that graphs are there. Based on the graph, it will tell you whether material is thixotropic, plastic, pseudoplastic, dilatin, what kind of material it is. Now, one very important thing in cup and bob viscometer, which lead to the development of the next generation, that is cone and plate viscometer, is lot of material is required. So this is disadvantage. Lot of material is required in cup and bob viscometer. This is the first disadvantage. The second disadvantage is, again I will tell you, I will just redraw it. So suppose we put plastic material in them. So if plastic material is there, I am just enlarging this portion. So whole this is plastic material and you know plastic material needs some initial value to start with the flow. Now, let us take an example. The plastic material which is filled inside requires 5 Newton of force so as to begin with the motion. This means its stress value, its yield value is 5 Newtons. So when this bob is moving with 5 Newton, we can assume that only the part of this material will move because this is in close proximity to the bob. The material which is away from the bob does not experience the same force. Probably it will be experiencing say 4 to 3 Newton. And since they are plastic material at 4 or 3 Newtons, this do not move. Only this part will move. As you know, as the area will change, the amount of force will decrease. So this will not move, only this will move. And this lead to jamming of the instrument, the phenomena called as plug flow, which is the characteristic of plastic material tested in 
कप एंड बॉब विस्कोमीटर अगेन सी यू टेक a jam in a bottle you apply force in the center you will see that in the center only movement is there the jam or jelly which is close to the container does not move till the force is greater than some exceptionally high force so exactly same happens there see when 10 newton is placed when force is 10 newton obviously this will move but initially when force is 5 newton close to the material which is moving the latter material, the move, material which is away, do not move, causing jamming or incorrect results. The phenomena known as plug flow, which is the characteristic of plastic materials moving through cup and bob viscometer. So to overcome these two disadvantages, cone and plate viscometers are developed. So this is cone, this is plate. Either cone moves or plate moves, either of them moves. If you will see that it requires very small amount of material, usually 0.6 ml of material, it requires large amount of material. And since cone touches, so if you see the cone, it is not like actually cone, it is like this. So the cone touches all the material at one time and because of it there is no chance of plug flow here there is difference in the force there same force is exerted to hold of the material rest in cone and plate viscometer and cup and bob viscometer the estimations are made in a same order as done that is viscosity is equals to k into w by r that is the changing weight and the changing rpm we have to record in order to determine the flow of the material fine the penetrometers are advanced form of cone and plate viscometers they look like similar to cone and plate viscometers but there is no plate only cone is there this cone can penetrate the semi-solid or solid material and moves inside so penetrometers they are spindles with a cone so different varieties of cones are there which are used to determine the viscosity or rheology of semi-solid materials ointments or creams where these equipments do not work so they first penetrate and they move inside so they rupture and determine the data required by the rheometers hi students the last part of viscometers is non-Newtonian corrections since see like capillary viscometers they are based on Pauli's equation following sphere viscometers based on Stokes law but the Pauli's equation say that the liquid should flow freely through a capillary whereas in case of falling sphere viscometers the Stokes law says that there should be no obstructions the fluid should be infinite but actually when we are doing experiments this is not the case the capillary the liquid is not falling freely because there is pressure exerted in falling sphere the fluid is not infinite it is constrained in a wall in a burette so wall pressure is there so because of those there are non-Newtonian corrections which are included so the corrected value of viscosity is equal to the original viscosity divided by the correction factor multiplied by n this n is constant so correction factor for capillary viscometer is 3n plus 1 by 4n so n is determined from uh, rheogram so from the rheograms this n value is calculated 3n plus 1 by 4n is calculated and this is multiplied by the viscosity which is coming viscosity divide multiply by this correction factor will give you corrected viscosity similarly for falling sphere viscometers the correction factor is 1 minus 2.104 multiply by small d by capital D small d is diameter of the sphere whereas capital D is diameter of the burette or the container plus 2.09 d cube by capital D cube so this has to be included so what you have to do after completing your experiment determining your viscosity what you have to do you have to use this equation d 
diameter of the sphere can be calculated by vernier caliper same with the diameter of the container or the tube which you have taken is calculated put the values determine this value multiply by um, your viscosity this will give you corrected viscosity for cup and bob viscometer it is simply 1 by n whereas for cone and plate viscometer it is 1 this means that for cone and plate viscometer there is no need for correction all the results are accurate since in cup and bob viscometer there is chances of plug flow therefore this is introduced in falling sphere viscometers since wall pressure is there so this is introduced in case of capillary viscometers since there is no vacuum beneath the capillary so this these correction factors are included when these correction factors are used you will get the most accurate results of the relative viscosity through capillary and falling sphere whereas absolute viscosity from cup and bob and cone and plate viscometers I tell you once again, all rotational viscometers are used to determine non-Newtonian materials as well as Newtonian materials. They are actually called as rheometers, whereas all others like falling sphere and capillary and density dependent, they are simple viscometers used for Newtonian material only.